I have come to visit Dr. Norman Fashing, who has been working exclusively on mites that are found in the fluid of peacher plants and tree hole mites. And I'm going to introduce him and we will try to learn how he has been working, how he collects, and how he prepares to identify these mites. So here is Dr. Fashion. Tell me first of all, how you became interested in peacher plant mites? I started working on mites at the University of Kansas as a graduate student working with Dr. Beer, Bob Beer. And I started working on tree hole mites and became very interested in their uh, ecology and biology. Nothing was known about them and I was interested in how they disperse, what they're feeding on, their interactions with the other organisms in the tree hole, and other things about their biology. After working on them for a number of years, I uh, expanded a little bit and uh, started looking at other plant-held waters. There's a large group of plants called, that are called phytotelmata, which means actually plant ponds. And these are ones that collect water in different ways and other creatures live in there, various species of insects, beetles, flies, other things in that aquatic habitat, generally as larvae. And mites have also exploited that in different ways. And so you have a community of organisms, of uh, small arthropods, that can be living in something the size of a water cup. This is a Nepenthes, the genus Nepenthes, and the family Nepenthiaceae, and they form pitchers. Uh, on the ends of their leaves. You can see the leaf here, a tendril coming off, and a pitcher forming at the end. It would have started out oh, excuse me, uh, as a tendril growing, and you can see the little part curled on here, which then will expand and become larger as it grows. And you can see this is an unopened pitcher. And as it gets larger and more mature, the pitcher will open, and here's a younger pitcher, as we see here, just opened, and finally they will deepen in color and look like this one. Now this is one of perhaps over 80 species of Nepenthes that grow in Southeast Asia. Uh, if you look at the top of this, you can see this little peristome here. There will be various nectar glands and things along this that attract insects, primarily in this plant species, ants. In this, uh, and the ants crawl up, walk on here, lose foothold, and drop in to the fluid inside. Now this young pitcher here that hasn't opened has fluid in it right now because they will put digestive fluids into this to help break down the captured insects. So if we looked inside of some of these pictures, out in nature, you would find lots and lots of decaying insects in the bottom. Now once they are opened, rainwater will add some fluid to this too, of course, when it rains. But it will still be putting out digestive enzymes. And because there is a resource inside of this with various foods and nutrients of other types, insects, primarily in the case of these pictures, mosquitoes, midges, uh, sarcophagid fly larvae, there are a whole bunch of things, even some surfed flies, other types. I went to Australia to study tree hole mites in Australia. I took a trip uh, up to northern Australia in far north Queensland where in the tip of the peninsula there, the York Penin Cape York Peninsula, there's a species of pitcher plant. And I looked inside and I found there were three species of mites. Now earlier you said that uh, there are different books written on these peacher plants. Can you show me a couple of these books? Uh, there are several books. Uh, uh, there are two books here. Here's one uh, that's illustrated mainly with drawings, but it's uh, one of the pitcher plants of Borneo. It only came out a few years ago, uh, about three or four years ago, uh, and it has nice 
drawings in them of pitcher plants, as you can see, illustrations by one of the authors. The other books that are out in, on one on Borneo is by Charles Clark. Charles Clark studied pitcher plant ecology. He's a botanist. And th these are of the known species of pitcher plants in Borneo, as I mentioned, over 30 species. So, so. Th th there is no book for uh, mites of fish plants, right? Uh, no. No book for mites of pitcher plants. Uh, there probably won't be for a number of years because most mites are unknown. Uh, they're just out there and have to, yet to be discovered. But uh, perhaps after I get enough of these described that I've collected last year in uh, Borneo and in, in Thailand, perhaps I can write a short book. So I use this kind of as a way to introduce it. And you can see that I have put in one, two, three, four, five, six different genera of mites. These uh, top ones here feed on decomposing leaves by actually biting chunks out of them and shredding the leaf so you get a skeletonized leaf when they're finished. This is the adult of the fly here. You can see it very much looks like a bumblebee. These duodenphs or hypopi will then crawl on this fly up between the legs and these little duodenphs are only about a third of a millimeter long, crawl up between the legs in the coxal areas of the fly or on the area right behind the thorax where they attach with their attachment organs and then they're carried to a new habitat. Okay, this is the hypopus of the, the acarid mite that lives in the tree holes. And you can see a dorsal view here, a ventral view here. You can see the mouth parts coming up are non-feeding, they're just sensory. It doesn't even have a complete digestive tract. Very heavily uh, sclerotized or hardened and resistant to desiccation compared to the adults, which can last very little time out of water. And down here at the bottom, you can see the sucker plate and a blow-up view of the sucker plate here that it uses to attach. Um, now, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for giving me time and uh, learning more about the work that you have been doing here. Um, maybe in future, I would like to come and visit again. Uh, if some more work progresses in this line. So, here. Yeah.